Welcome to American Baptist Church's Facebook Live Worship Service. I'm Reverend Kimberly, and I'm glad that you are here to worship with us either at 8 p.m. Mountain Time on a very, very cold uh, Colorado, northern Colorado evening. It is already negative 16 degrees where we live, and I know some of you, I know at least one of you is from Fargo, and I know it's way colder there, uh, so I won't complain, but... Um, but I do like us to think about those who do not have safe, warm places to be tonight and on nights like this. And um, and those who don't have safe churches to worship in or, um, or be with, even without coronavirus, places, um, people that maybe aren't always welcome in worship uh, for whatever reason. Um, this is a place, you know, here on Sunday evenings, most Sunday evenings, if the internet works, um, we are a place of where people from all over the country can uh, connect, um, either live or usually later, um, uh, wherever it is that you're from, whatever your background, whatever your sexual orientation or gender identity, uh, you're welcome here and you are loved. You are deeply loved, affirmed, and celebrated on these, uh, in these services and in these days. And uh, so you are also invited um, to just take, this won't be a very long service. This will probably just go until a little after 8.30. Um, but this today was Transfiguration Sunday, and that gets a lot of weird, it's like a lot of weirdo mystical stuff it can be to try to explain what is this. And the best way that I have to sort of explain what it means to me, and I would love to hear what it means to you, is that the veil, uh, which keeps me from seeing God, not only in everyday life, not only um, in other people, but just God and hope and love and Christ, um, whatever it is, it keeps me from really seeing, which also somehow also affects my believing and affects my access to this thing called hope. So, um, Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we can work for a day where everybody has access to that hope, where everyone can have that veil uncovered, uh, whether that veil is the veil of racism or sexism or homophobia or hatred of some sort, war, violence, starvation, hunger, poverty, um, or whether that veil is addiction or a mental illness, or um, self-hatred and shame. So that is the hope that as we journey in the next, I don't know, 25 minutes, um, you will find yourself um, able to see God more, to see Christ more, not only outside of you, but within. So there'll be a couple readings, followed by silence, followed by music. Um, we will be singing Ode to uh, Joyful, Joyful, uh, um, no, <laughs> Joy to the World. Wow, I'm really off today. Joy to the World, because it is a hymn that was not intended for Christmas. And we'll sing it a little differently, and we'll just do the first verse. Um, but um, I wanted us to be able to uh, have some songs that were familiar to you in a key that I can lead you in and... Um, but you can sing it in whatever key that you wish. So please join me as I read these words by Edwin Muir. We would have thrown our clothes away for lightness, but that even they, though sour and travel-stained, seemed like our flesh made of immortal substance, 
and the soiled flax and wool lay light upon us like friendly wonders, flower and flock entwined, as in a morning field. Was it a vision? Or did we see that day the unseeable, one glory of the everlasting world, perpetually at work, though never seen since Eden locked the gate that's everywhere and nowhere. from Augustine, from his Confessions, Book 7, Chapter 9. And Augustine writes, I entered into the secret closet of my soul, led by you. And this I could do because you were my helper. I entered and behold, with the mysterious eye of my soul, the light that never changes above the eye of my soul, above my intelligence. It was not the common light which all flesh can see, nor was it greater yet of the same kind as if the light of day were to grow brighter and brighter and flood all space. It was not like this, but different, altogether different from such things. Nor was it above my intelligence in the same way as oil is above water or heaven above earth, but it was higher because it made me. And I was lower because I was made by it. The one who knows the truth knows the light. And who knows it knows eternity. Love knows it.
there is much for us to pray for and have on our minds. We certainly have um, people who have COVID, people who have lost family uh, and loved family and loved ones, uh, co-workers to COVID and to other illnesses, people who are fighting addiction, who are um, drug and alcohol addiction, sex addiction, pornography addiction, gambling addiction, eating disorder addiction, um, uh, addiction to other people, codependency, um, so many of them out there. And it seems that um, so many more are also just struggling with getting up in the morning or uh, being alive or finding food or finding a safe place to live. So we lift up all of those things, including those things that are on your heart, and those people on your heart that you may not even be aware are there. And as we lift them up, um, Listen to the words from, and I'm taking this completely out of context, but listen to the words here. And this is in reference to uh, when um, uh, a conversation about how um, people, when they read the Torah, um, they had to wear a veil. I believe that was it. Um, when they had to put um, a veil over Moses to keep Israel from gazing at the glory of God, that was it. So anything that has to do with the glory of God, it's this idea that we cannot see it. Although um, uh, we do have um, uh, stories of Moses seeing uh, the glory of God from behind, which is interesting. And, um, and certainly there are stories of this. But the idea um, is not only that it's mystery um, and um, that it's powerful, but it, it also has a lot to do with readiness and what do we have that we are ready to see. Um, and um, so what we're going to hear later um, in a few minutes, about five minutes actually after the song, is we're going to hear a story about Jesus going up on the mountain and meeting Elijah and Moses up on the mountain and Jesus being transfigured. In other words, the veil that, um, that kept everyone from seeing Jesus and who he really was. Um, and what his purpose was, was lifted for a moment. And uh, so that the other disciples, um, was, who was it, Peter, James, and John, I think it was, um, they could see uh, Jesus and uh, hear the voice of God come from a cloud and say, this is my son, you guys. This is my beloved one. You have to listen to him. And uh, so I didn't mean to say all that, but let's go here with this scripture. And as we think about those what veils our own vision. Um, think about um, what this means if it's really true. Can you imagine if these words I'm going to read to you are true? So it's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed 
into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord. This comes from the Spirit. So friends, I'm going, I wrote this song a couple of years ago, um, and the lyrics are on the page there, but this is more about a journey, um, what it means to sing these words or to have these words in your heart, and also um, what would it sound like if it were music, and are you able to let down your guard just enough so that you can maybe either see through that veil or let it go completely, even if just for a moment. And if you can't, notice if you can sense that there is a love that is <laughs> wider than the ocean and deeper than the sea and deeper than the sky, an infinite love that is there present with you. And if you can't do that, then maybe you can find someone who can at least point that way to you, to remind you that you are made in God's image, and that the Spirit of God, that deep abiding love, is embedded in your own heart. So please join me in our time of meditation and prayer. Glory, I 
our creator, father and mother of us all who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not abandon us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So friends, now we're here for the story. And again, it is the story that comes after the sermon. So hopefully everything will make sense by the end of this and you will be able to go out and feel that freedom and feel that hope and spread that love. So here we are from Mark 9, beginning with verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high Martin, mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them. That means he just lit up. And his clothes became dazzling white, a dazzling color, um, such that no one on earth could bleach them. So this would be, uh, if you can imagine, like we've been using a lot of bleach these days since coronavirus. And um, uh, But imagine you had uh, my clothes, right? Um, and there was nothing you could do to make them uh, bleached out. You couldn't bleach out all the color. Um, why would you want to? Uh, but... Uh, you weren't able to bleach them. So these were clothes, uh, whatever it was that Jesus was wearing. Um, so, uh, so no color in them at all, uh, revealing everything who Jesus is. So think about it in that sense. Don't think about um, white versus black. Think about it as revealing everything, <clears throat> everything about Jesus that needed to be known at that time, in that moment, up on that mountain. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, and I don't remember, they were a little nervous, so he couldn't think of anything else to say, so this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came this voice. This is my son. This is my beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they turned around, they saw it was just them. There wasn't anybody else there. No Moses, no Elijah, probably no more cloud. It was only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen. Until after Jesus, or the son of humanity, or the child of humanity, had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. And that, my friends, is the story of the transfiguration of Jesus. And I have a poem here to read uh, to you. It is an homage to Jesus Maffa, and I will post this picture. So Jesus Maffa is a series of um, paintings based on drawings, um, in Cam from Cameroon, uh, where they wanted to tell the gospel stories and uh, have them in art form. Um, so <laughs> instead of trying to explain the scripture, I'm going to read this poem by Marin Terbasi, and you can follow her on Facebook. I encourage you to do that. And I also encourage you to check out her uh, website, which is listed here. So listen to the words that she writes. She explains it so much better than I can. What you love is what you see. Maybe only for a moment, maybe only once, maybe more. But once is enough. Also, what you love is what you follow anywhere. And it is what heals you. It makes you into a healer. And one red day opens your mouth.
to speak strange words. What you love already is what you see. Maybe a person transfigured, maybe a paper valentine, with remembered words of great love. So friends, let's sing the last verse as a prayer of love divine, all loves excelling. Breathe, oh breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast, it starts. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the promised rest. Take away the love of sinning, alpha and omega be, and of faith as its beginning set our hearts at liberty. Here are the words of benediction for you today from, if I can pronounce his name right, Adi Vik, a 13th century poet. Bitter and dark and desolate are love's ways in the beginning of love, before anyone is perfect in love's service. We often become desperate, yet where we imagine losing, it is all gain. How can one experience this? By sparing neither too much nor too little. By giving oneself totally in love. Friends, I hope that this was a service that um, helped you to see the love that is God, that is Christ or the God of your understanding, not only outside of you, but within your very heart and soul. Much love to each of you.